Welcome to my office, lab, and I guess you would call it my video studio because this is where I make all of my videos that I've been uh, showing to you guys except for obviously the ones that are outside. Um, so today I want to talk to you about your microcosms that you're going to be making observations about. Now I know some of you haven't made them yet, that's okay. Uh, just uh, be really good if you get it done by the end of this weekend if you can because you're going to be making observations on these until the end of the school year when you have to hand in all of your papers. So for we want observations for two, three weeks. So I have my microcosm here. It actually isn't really ready yet. It should really sit for another couple days, but I know some of you might be ready to make observations, so I wanted to show you what to do for that um, so you can start doing that. So I made a data table, much like what is in the book, and I'll show that to you. So this is my data table, and yeah, it's backwards, but basically it's like the one that is in the book, except for it does not have temperature because you do not have a thermometer. Now, I made one for a control group, and I also made one for the pollutant because you're going to have to make observations of both jars. You have two jars. One is going to be your control, and one you're going to add a pollutant uh, into, and I'll talk about that towards the end here. Okay, so looking on page 169, you can follow along with me. I'm under observing succession in an aquatic microcosm. So it says, after the aquatic microcosm has been set up for two or three days, make the following observations and record the data you obtain on a classroom chart like the one illustrated on page 171. Well, we don't have a classroom chart. You're going to have your own chart. So to record the statistics about the microcosm, do not disturb the microcosm as you make these observations. Don't shake it a lot, okay? Don't worry about recording the temperature. You can cross that off if you want. It says place a drop of the microcosm on a universal pH test paper. Record the pH. That is what is in, some of you have a small vial like this, some of you have a larger one, these little orange color test strips or pH test strips and I made a note somewhere for you that you don't have to use a full one of these you can tear just a little piece off and I don't know if you can see that that's all you need okay and I have just a little lid I got out of the recycling so that I can do my observations on and I don't have a pipette like I gave you guys so I'm using a straw and I'm just going to take a drop of water out of my microcosm with my pipette, or in the case with my straw, and I am going to get that wet. And then the little chart that you got in your vial, you match that to the color that that makes when the drop is on it. And mine says six. So under pH in my table, I'm going to record a six, okay? So that's all you do with the pH paper. And you'll do that in both of your jars. I'm going to only demonstrate one jar for time's sake today. So that's the pH paper. Now it also says to record the turbidity. And turbidity is the cloudiness of the water. Indicate not only how cloudy the water is, but also what color it is. My water today has very little turbidity. But it is kind of a, I guess, yellowish color. And oh, I stirred it up there a little bit, which is what I'm not supposed to be doing. So I'll just stop doing that. But before it got stirred up, there was very little turbidity. So I'll record that little turbidity. And it's kind of a yellow color. So I wrote that down. Now, it says record statistics about the organisms in the microcosm. Groups of, uh, well, obviously you're not in groups, but I will just summarize this part. So, to take samples, 
I have my straw, you have your pipette. Reuse the pipettes, I gave you four. Uh, once you add your pollutant to one of these jars, try not to mix the pipette up. Maybe mark it somehow so that you know that the one goes in the jar with the pollutant, the other one goes in the control jar. Uh, because otherwise, if you mix them up, you could introduce the pollutant into the control jar and that would not be good. Because then that's polluted. So I'm going to take samples, a drop of water from the top, or a couple drops, and put them on my lid here. And then I did give you a hand lens. I don't know how well this is going to work, but it's all we had. With the hand lens, I'm just going to kind of see if I can see if there's anything in there. I can hold the sample like this. And remember, you always put the hand lens to your dominant eye and then look through there. And I'm just looking to see if I see anything. Now, if you have a hand lens like mine, you have two lenses. This actually, the smaller lens is a little higher power, so you can use that too. Not everybody has that because I did not have the same kinds of hand lenses for everybody. And I am seeing kind of like little algae-like debris in there. Um, so I could write that down. I could write that I see algae, possibly. And I see kind of, well, I'll just record some of the bigger specs. Maybe like 20 algae, okay? So top 20. It's hard to tell. Now I just kind of let the drop go to the edge of my lid and I'm gonna take a sample from the middle and put a few whoops drops there. It kind of went over to the side, but that's okay. I can look at that. And I'll do the same thing. And again, it looks like I have some algae. I do kind of want to make sure that maybe everything's about the same size that I'm looking at so my counts are good. But I'll put for the way they do in the middle, they have top for the middle. I can just put an M even, some more algae, and maybe still like, you know, about 20, okay? And then I'm going to go to the bottom and get some drops. And look at that again. And there, my, my drop has quite a bit more from the bottom. Again, algae, but there's quite a bit there. Probably about five times as much. So bottom for B, algae, maybe about 100. Okay? I'm really not too concerned about the counts, uh, although I, it would be good to know if it's going up as this goes on or if it's going down, whatever. So just going to be making some observations about that. Now it says to identify your organisms, which may be really difficult because we don't have the microscope, um, but there might become a point where they are large enough to see. And so it said to use a pictorial key, which I did not provide you with. What I would do is just go on the internet, and I actually did this before, just go on the internet and do a search in Google for pond life, pond organisms, microscopic pond organisms, and you'll have all kinds of pictures come up. And just look at the pictures, and if something looks like what you have, click on it and uh, record that down. If not, it says just try to draw something. Uh, you might even just say they just look like black moving dots. That's fine, just write down black moving dots and how many you see, okay? Um, it's Without the microscope, this is going to be a little more difficult, but I do want you to see one thing I really like to do. I think you remember I had the Elodea um, jar 
and you could see different organisms starting to grow in there and everything and it was just kind of neat to see that it does go through a progression and so that's really what we're looking for um, so just uh, writing down the turbidity writing down okay I have like red moving dots in there I have green moving dots I have a lot of green stuff growing um, just those kinds of observations will be good um, and we're going, like I said, every couple of days, like every other day, make observations for two to three weeks, okay? Um, I'm kind of, Haley had a bunch of questions, so I'm looking at her questions too right now. Um, let's see, I think I have that covered. Okay, Haley also wanted to know about the pollutant. So this is obviously not ready for the pollutant. But as far as the pollutant is concerned, that's why you have two jars. One will be just like this. The other we will put a pollutant in. Now the pollutants that I thought would be good ones for you to choose from, they're listed in the materials, something like baking soda or vinegar. It changes the pH, which could affect what will live in here. So just add like a tablespoon of baking soda, a tablespoon of vinegar, or something like that, you may need to add, keep adding some. Now, Haley said, you know, the lab's kind of vague, it doesn't tell me amounts of everything. Well, it's kind of vague because it doesn't know what size jar you're using, things like that. So, um, just try things out. Add some baking soda in. If it doesn't seem to be enough, add some more, okay? Um, other things you could add is if you have lime that maybe you put on your lawn, you could put lime in there. You could put some dish soap, okay, because that's a common pollutant that's getting into our streams. You could put laundry detergent, dishwasher detergent, uh, maybe your parents have been tending the yard and you have some fertilizer, add some fertilizer in there. Only choose one pollutant though. Okay, but these are all possibilities. Um, if you have something else, maybe you have some uh, motor oil, something like that, and you wanna see how that affects this. So one pollutant, and those are a lot of ideas. And I think I have covered all of the questions Haley had, and I believe that I have covered everything I want to and if you have questions, please text me, email me, uh, give me a call, whatever, and I will be happy to answer your questions. And I may even uh, make another video to address those questions. But um, I think that will get you started. And so have fun watching these. I always enjoy uh, watching uh, just whenever I have a jar sitting on in my lab I enjoy watching what is happening with it so I'll see you later